Bob Sansevier here with Pioneer Press reporter Brian Murphy and John Plume. Outgoing deputy Outgoing sports editor. Outgoing deputy sports editor John Plume going to ESPN. Big shot. <laughs> now, the Twins open uh, spring training pitchers and catchers report. 18th. Saturday, the 18th. Uh, and then, what, the 23rd is when the rest of them report. And frankly, no matter, we could talk all we want about the Twins. It all comes down to two people, Joe Maurer and Justin Morneau. If I, I do think Maurer is going to play more games than he did last year, but the question is, it all comes down really then to more no, because no one can predict and he can't predict what will happen. Will he have any more issues related to his concussion? And uh, Brian, I mean, is there are, is there another factor? Who I mean, does Parmalee come in? Who plays first base if he doesn't? Do they bring Willingham and put him at first? Well, yeah, they can, but I mean, you can't expect thirty-five home runs and hundred no. RBIs and one hundred and sixty games and three hundred average and the leadership in the clubhouse. Concussions are so volatile right now. I mean, all you got to do is ask the Wild. They're without Pierre Marc Bouchard again. They're without uh, Guillaume Latendres. These guys may never play again. And Morneau is in a position where if he does, you know, all it takes is you know one collision at first base, one bad slide, could take a dive. And and I don't think they should you know hide him at DH to protect him in that regard. But the point is, you don't know. You don't know if that will happen in the middle of May. You don't know if you're going to lose the guy for a week, six months. So there is a lot of uncertainty with that. I think he's definitely at risk more than Maurer. But no matter what, it cannot be as bad as last year, can it? See, well, John, I actually think that you do put him at DH because then you reduce the risk of him getting hurt. If he's not going to get hurt at first if he's only DHing. He could get hurt, but you're cutting the risk or the, the, uh, the percentage of I risk. mean, he could double off the wall in right field the first game of the season at Camden Yards, slide into second base to, and hit his head again on some guy's knee, Anything. and he's out for the year. I mean, And he's an excellent fielding first baseman. He, I think you need him on the field. He's an unknown. So if you don't have him, I mean, there's going to be risk any way you slice it. I mean, you got to think maybe at some point they move Maurer to first. And they put and they let Domit and Butera platoon as catcher. Or you put Domit at first base or Parmalee at first base. You're not going to see Willingham at first base. He's either going to play right or he's going to play left because those are the two best positions to play him. But, I mean, this whole thing with Morno, he's got two years left on his deal. They're paying him $15, $16 million. And like Brian said, one hit, he could be through for his career. Well, if he has another hit, that would be the end for him because you just can't keep bringing him back and letting him risk – the long these, these athletes will risk it, but as a team, they can't let him risk. I mean, look at Sidney Crosby for the Penguins. <laughs> I mean, you just the guy's a great hockey player. Is he going to play consistently the rest of his career? Probably not. Well, let's, let's go to best case scenario. Maurer stays healthy, and they get a season or most of a full season out of Morneau. Are they back to contending to win the? Uh, the division, or is that not what cannot not happen because of moves that have been made by other teams? I, you know, I think they can, you know, contend to a degree. I mean, it's hard to, it's easy to predict here on Valentine's Day how many games they'll win. But I mean, a nine, an eighty-five win, ninety win season is is a heck of an improvement over the bottom falling out last year. But you got to look at the Detroit Tigers, how they ramped up. You got to look at how Cleveland is coming on. You got to look at Kansas City is not going to yeah, be Chicago the doormat anymore. Exactly, you know, Chicago's kind of mailed it in at this point. They're rebuilding. But, but I mean, Cleveland and, and Cleveland Detroit become and, Detroit, and Detroit, Detroit the moves they've made. I mean, you got to look at them as the, obviously the defending division champs. Uh, you know, with Verlander and, they and bring the rotation, and they bring in Prince Fielder. I mean, this is a team that is obviously seeing a window close. Its owner, Mike Illich, is getting older. He wants a World Series title. He's got plenty of Stanley Cups. He sees the window closing. I mean, he's he's going all in right now. And I don't see anybody, you know, being able to win that division with 88 wins. Well, you certainly cast a dim prospect. It's, it's not going to happen. Well, for this. It, you know, it's not it, going to happen for this team. Their pitching staff, you've got four pitch-to-contact guys. Your fifth starter wherever they slot him in there, Liriano, he's good for five innings, and then the bottom falls out on him. I mean, that's the way it's been well, you know what? Why for don't two you years give now. Him this. Give him the 18th through the 23rd, and on the 24th, then everything will fall out, because that's when the position players show up, and you'll know where you're I mean, it just out. Well, I think it's just realistic, and I don't think it's... It, it, if they did win 85 to 90 games, I think a lot of people would think, well, that's just ridiculous because they didn't... They didn't win the division, but after what happened last year, you got to acknowledge they are rebuilding somewhat. Yeah. I mean, they're gambling with Zamaya. They're gambling with Jamie Carroll. Ga- gambling with everyone they brought in. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, everything that everything that Terry Ryan is doing, he's gambling. If and, and if that's it, why and, he got him at the price and, he did. And if he, if it works, it's great. But if it ends up the way it did with Bill Smith and the things that he did, Terry's going to look just as bad. People are going to be calling for his head. You're looking at maybe a, another seventy. 
win season. And then where did the Twins go from there? Jim Polad, he might be faced with, i got to replace Morneau. i got to replace three guys in the pitching staff. We're a small market team, so they claim. They don't want to spend more than 90 to $100 million on payroll. They went down that road last year, and look what it got them, 66 wins. I don't think you can underestimate as well the loss of Michael Kadire in the clubhouse. This is a team who... Character and identity revolved around him. He's, the, he's now gone. Yes, he was the leader. He that was Joe the leader. Mauer should have been, and he needs to step up. And I think Maurer may realize that as well. Because if Morneau is going to be on the DL and Maurer's out there all alone, he needs to take charge of that clubhouse. And I don't know what that's going to mean for the dynamic of the team. I mean, are they going to be that that gritty, take the extra base, take no prisoners team that Tory Hunter and Kadir he, but and these guys? The thing promote? is, though, does Maurer strike you as the kind of guy is that that take charge type of leader? Well, what's going to happen with Maurer is he's going to catch a cold or pneumonia down in spring training and he'll be out the first month. Well, I mean, that's the sad part, is that that's the perception of this guy right now. And I'm not saying it's not true. He's earned it because he yeah. hid in the hot tub for months on end and, and let this diagnosis be defined by anybody but himself. But I think if he doesn't take charge of this clubhouse, to a certain degree, you're right. If he comes off as over the top and aggressive, he's not gonna, his teammates aren't going to buy There's into no it. There's no way he would. But he needs, he, he, no, but he needs to be the guy. You're t- making $23 million. You're th- almost 30 years old. You've lost your key leader. You're coming off the worst season of your career. You need to get in there and be, this is Joe Mauer's you know, team. Frankly, Brian, the only time I ever saw him have any sort of life in terms of emotion is when I asked him the question, you know, the perception is you're soft. Are you? And then he got, that's when he really got ticked off and finally started reacting to things because suddenly... Because I don't think he realized it. And that's well, just as much a detriment as actually being labeled that as being unself-aware. Well, and he, he's never had criticism. This is the first time he's really faced true criticism. And I don't think he knows how to deal with it. But we'll find out how he deals with it. better. And the twins deal with it in the days, weeks, months, millennia. What else? Centuries ahead? Well, not centuries. Centuries ahead. But Years. we'll find out in the next few weeks. And good luck much. at the worldwide leader. Play ball. Yes, have a great time. Play ball. Thanks a lot for leaving. Play ball.